and we just pop our fitting into the hole and you should hear it pop when it goes in that's how you know it's nice and secure what's up lazy dog fam hope all y'all having an awesome day it is thursday february 22nd here in south georgia and as spring is coming near we've been getting a lot of questions about drip tape drip irrigation what we use how to set it up and i've got some cabbage and some other brassicas i need to plant in this plot behind me so i figured it would be a great day to show you the full install from start to finish so let's start out by taking a look at our canvas that we're going to be painting today this is a plot that we had cover cropped back in the fall and into winter a little bit we let our chickens graze this several times i had planned to put a tarp on this never got around to it you can see some of that cover crop has grown back a little bit there not too bad not that weedy out there either i was able to get this cleaned up with a wheel hoe a stirrup hoe and a rake in just about 20 minutes so we're going to plant this little spot right here that i have cleaned up and then this over here is going to get sweet corn in a few weeks so let's go through our supply list here real quick we'll talk about each of these pieces in more detail as we put it all together so we're going to need some mainline tubing aka supply line we're going to need some drip tape Got a little bucket of fittings there and gonna need a few bricks or your heavy object of choice. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is put down this main line tubing along one side of our garden plot so that it sits perpendicular to the direction of our drip tape. And before we put this down, let me talk about this for a minute because this is one of the parts that confuses a lot of people and that's partly my fault. So sometimes I refer to this stuff as 5 8 inch tubing. Sometimes I call it half inch tubing, but it's the same thing. Different companies, different brands. Some of them refer to the outside diameter, 5 8 Some refer to the inside diameter, half inch. And for all you Alabama folks out there that are still scratching your head a little bit, that means this tubing is an eighth of an inch thick. Anyways, this is what you need as long as your rows are not longer than 100 foot long. If you're doing 100 foot long rows or longer, you gotta go to a bigger tubing. But this works for most backyard gardeners. All right, so we got our main line tubing stretched out along the width of the plot there. This is where you need the bricks to hold it down on one end so it doesn't coil back up to the sun. Kind of works some of that memory out of it. A couple pro tips here for you. Put your main line tubing kind of inside your plot a little bit, not right on the edge. That way you don't hit it with a lawnmower. Don't ask me why. I know that. And then another tip here. If you can, if you're just using a little bit of this at a time, but you're working with a big roll, don't undo all the straps or cut all the straps on the roll. It makes this stuff a lot easier to store. And then pro tip number three, watch out for fire ants. Now we just need to cap this mainline tubing on both ends. I really like these little units right here because they don't break if you run over them with a lawnmower tire. And you can also unscrew the end there and easily flush out your system so we just need to slide that onto the tubing there tighten down that nut and then we'll put our cap back on right here make sure that's nice and tight so no water will be coming out of there now we need to take this setup right here and put it in the center of that mainline tubing. And no, you can't buy this particular setup pre-assembled, but it's pretty simple. I'll go through the pieces. So we've got our filter right here. Water hose is going to hook right there into that little swivel inside here. Got this little mesh filter piece. This one needs cleaning out. So you do have to wash these out from time to time. They get too clogged. Water won't get to your drip tape. You'll think your drip tape is clogging, but you really just need to clean your filter. Then we've got a 10 PSI pressure regulator here. Keeps the water pressure from being too high and blowing out the holes in your drip tape. So you need that downstream of the filter. And then we've just got a little T here where this is going to sit in the middle of that mainline tubing. I won't take this apart because I've got pipe tape using uh, to connect it all here it was really really simple and all these pieces we're using today are on blogs on our website i'll put links to those in the description below and we'll have links to each individual piece you can grab what you need 
So now we just need to cut this main line tubing right there in the center and connect both of those cut ends to our filter and pressure regulator set up there. And there we go. Now that main line is a little jacked up right now, but once the sun works on that a little bit more this afternoon, it'll flatten on out. And if you're going to do a lot of this, I would highly recommend getting you one of these little main line cutters here. A lot safer to use than a knife. I know a fellow that wears a yellow hat that has cut his hand several times trying to cut that stuff with a knife. So this right here makes it quick and easy and safe. So now we're ready to put down some drip tape. Let's talk about what type of drip tape we use. I've used several different brands and variations over the years, but this is the one I'm a big believer in now or the one I like the most, the one we use all the time, this Eartech P1 tape. And if you go on Drip Depot's website, you'll see all these different variations of this stuff. Different thicknesses, different emitter spacings, different flow rates. It can get really confusing for people. So I, over the last couple of years, have started liking the thicker stuff because I can get many more years of use out of it. So I use the 15 mil tape. I also have started using the tape with a six inch emitter spacing because that means I don't have to run my water near as long to keep plants happy. That comes in handy in the summer months when I'm trying to water or keep plants in four or five different plots happy. And so I can do that a lot faster with a six inch emitter spacing. And then the flow rate on this tape is 0.46 gallons per hour per 100 foot. I think they have a 15 mil tape with six inch emitter spacing with a flow rate of about half that. But I want the higher flow rate because that means I don't have to run my system as long. I can water one plot, keep everything happy, move the water hose to another plot and just keep rotating around keeping everything from being stressed too bad. Now this next part is optional. I like to bury my drip tape. You don't have to bury your drip tape. I would recommend having something to hold it in place, whether that be staples or dirt in our case here. So I just took the wheel hoe, made three furrows there. That's where we're gonna be burying our tape. And I can't find my nail. I normally use for this when I have my nail, what I do is I just push it through the drip tape into the ground there that holds it in place and just roll it out. But a brick's gonna have to do for today. So I'll just pick up that roll, start walking backwards and then cut it off at the end. So you can see drip tape sitting in all three of those furrows now. The next part is also optional, but something I would highly, highly recommend, and that is amending those furrows with something. We'll be using this Coop Grow fertilizer here. Any kind of balanced fertilizer would work. If you've got some manure-based compost, that would work too. Just put some kind of nutrients down in those furrows and you'll be glad you did. So now we've got our fertilizer down. This is what we call our FAD system, which stands for furrow, amend, and drip. We've been using it for years, works really, really well. Now we just need to hook up this drip tape to this mainline tubing. And to do that, we're gonna use this little fitting right here called a row start. You can get these with valves on them if for some reason you want to turn off a couple lines in your garden, not run all your drip lines at one time. I usually use the ones without the valve because I'm running all my lines every time. And when you're installing these, good idea to have some scissors to cut the drip tape. Sometimes with a knife, it's hard to cut it straight. And if you don't cut this stuff straight, that fitting's not gonna go on there good and it's gonna leak guaranteed. Also, when you're using this tape with a six inch emitter spacing, these emitters are hard here. So we can't put the fitting right near one of these emitters. So we do have to kind of cut the tape right behind an emitter there. Now we've got plenty of tape to work with to put on our fitting. So we'll just slide this fitting onto the tape push it on there good and then use this little nut to tighten it down. Then we need to punch a hole in our main line. There's lots of different hole punches out there. I really like these simple ones from Drip Depot. They punch a good hole and seem to last a while. So get it lined up with our furrow there. Punch our hole and we just pop our fitting into the hole and you should hear it pop when it goes in. That's how you know it's nice and secure. And now that all of our row start fittings are in place, we need to mosey on down to the other end of the plot and put some caps on the end of that drip tape. So I use these simple little end caps here where you just fold the tape into these things. You can also find some that are a little fancier that look like those caps we used on the end of the main line tubing. These usually work fine with me. Some people will also just fold them up, tie a knot in them. I've seen a bunch of different ways to do this. Same thing with the other end of the tape. 
we got to cut this in the right spot here so we want enough tape here to be able to fold up into this little fitting right here this end cap we can't fold an emitter into there so when i cut these when i was laying it out earlier i left me a good little stretch of tape to fold so we stick it through the narrow end of this end cap just like that pull it all the way through and then we just fold this tape a couple times with this 15 mil thicker tape usually Holding it twice is good enough. So let's pull it back through and it's nice and tight. If you're using an eight mil tape, you may have to fold it three times, but you'll get the hang of it. These are really easy to use. And that's it. Now let's go hook our water hose back up to the front of the plot there, turn it on, make sure we did everything right. Okay, we got the water hose plugged into our filter set up there, got it turned on. And if we come over here and look at our tape, we can see it has now inflated and we can see water coming out of those little emitters there every six inches along the tape now if you put all this together hook it up and you end up having a little dribble right there where that row start connects to the mainline tubing don't lose any sleep over it i've done bunches of these systems and every now and then it happens to me you don't want water gushing out of there but sometimes you might get a little bit of dribble looks like ours is pretty secure there you can also take the tape off that fitting make sure it's straight slide it up on there further a lot of times that will stop the leak now i'm not going to plant this today we'll save that for the next video but let's assume i was going to plant it today if i'm direct seeding something like corn beans and peas i'd go ahead and cover up this tape close this furrow then i could put my seeds either right on top of the tape or do a double row on both sides of the tape if i'm putting in plants like we're going to be doing with the cabbage tomorrow i want to put my plants beside these emitters now we've got emitters every six inches here i don't want to put my cabbage plants that close i want to put them a foot apart so cabbage plant there skip an emitter and another cabbage plant there if we're doing tomatoes we'd want those two foot apart so plant right there skip three emitters and then put another plant right there and don't get too caught up with the idea that you've got more emitters than you've got plants it's good to keep this entire row nice and moist keeps your soil biology active and the feeder roots on your plants will stretch out a lot farther than you think so having more emitters than you have plants will keep everything nice and happy so I hope you enjoyed that little step-by-step -step demonstration there. I know this was old news, basic stuff for some of you out there, but the channel is growing. We've got a lot of new subscribers, a lot of people asking about drip tape and drip irrigation. So I figured it was a great time to kind of break it all down. And if you've got any additional tips for the newbies or beginners out there, please do share those in the comments below. If you've got questions that I didn't answer, put those in the comments below and I'll try to help you out. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got blogs on our websites with links to all the pieces we use. We've got a blog for this setup we just put together, a blog for our raised bed setup, a blog for our fruit tree setup. I'll put links to those blogs in the description below, but if you go to our website, lazydogfarm.com, and just search irrigation, you should see those blogs pop up there too. And if you want to see us do this in a raised bed, which is kind of the same, but a little bit different, watch this video right here. We'll show you our entire setup, how we do the main line a little differently, but the drip tape stuff is kind of the same. So watch that and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.